I just put this pink line here um, so that I know where she is going to be standing. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> the QA department at Brace Yourselves making noise here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to... Um, what did, what did we call this? Bra Brace Yourself Games at Home? Um, for... Oh, it's a bit quiet? Okay. Is that better? Um, I can, like, blast it all the way, but this... I don't want it to clip into, like, the, the red. Um, anyway... For those who don't know who I am, I'm... Paul, I am the art director on Cadence of Hyrule, um, as well as um, lots of other games, uh, like Nuclear Throne, and I did some artwork for Sonic Mania. Um, so, since there's no um, um, real streaming schedule right now because of uh, the virus, I figured I would stream from my home and just draw some characters for a bit while answering uh, questions that anyone has about like pixel art and that kind of stuff or about being an art director or character design or animation um, anything that um, that I can answer I'll, I'll try to answer as, as best as possible um, hi everyone Oh, lots of people showing up, actually. Nice. All right, I'll just start drawing, and we can just keep talking and do whatever. So let's make a canvas here. I hope... Is, is, is the mic picking up the, like, keyboard really badly? Because there's going to be a lot of, like, clicking around because I use shortcuts and stuff. So apologies for that. I've, I've moved it away a little bit. Hopefully that helps. Actually, I should move this stick out of the way so I can put the mic back here. It's fine? Okay. Hi, everyone. Wow, all my Dutch friends are showing up. That's fun. All right. I figure we would just start with Cadence and then see how far we get, um, if we can do like any other characters. Um, but we'll see. We have like an hour and a half, so maybe we can do two characters or do like an animation for Cadence if we get like really far really quickly. Uh, we'll find out. So I figured it would be fun to like since both Necrodancer and um, Cadence of Hyrule are um, top-down games. I figured it would be fun to do like a like more like a platformer sprite for Cadence because you don't really ever see her like that. So let's try that. I'm just gonna put down like the basic shapes and stuff. I like a basic pose. Honestly, this part I'd like the least. Um, I I I can like zone out for hours just like rendering uh, frames, um, cleaning them up and stuff. But figuring out like the initial sprite is not my most favorite part. Yes, I'm using a draw. I can show you. If I tilt this, you can see that I'm drawing on here and it's like on an arm so I can like move it around and stuff. It's it's highly recommended. Like if you can afford a drawing tablet, it is it's absolutely uh, fantastic. It, it improved my um, my workflow like uh, significantly. Like, this is not going to look like much yet because it's mostly just like blobs and stuff while I'm trying to figure out the, 
the pose here. But I I don't know if I call it. Hopefully within an hour we'll actually find um, we'll find something that we can work with. Uh, let's see. Let's just let's do some color blobs here so that we get a better idea of where everything is on this character. Normally what I do is like I open some old assets that I have and like color pick from that. Um, but that is something I cannot do on stream. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, um, I, 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 I started out with a mouse. Like, when I first did pixel art, like, I only had MS Paint, and I had a mouse, and so that's what I used. Um, but picking up even, like, a normal tablet, so not, not necessarily one with a screen, um, but even a normal tablet, like, made me so much faster at um, doing pixel art. Uh, and like just just getting like my shapes down and stuff because you're you're less I feel like with a mouse you're very focused on um, on like clicking single pixels and like kind of like here if I use a mouse it's more like like that right uh, I have a face and like that that can work very well for like um, small stuff and like kind of simple stuff uh um if you're doing like like game boy style sprites for example that it, it could work very well for that because it's more you know almost making like icons right but when doing bigger sprites and when doing lots of animation i like being able to almost paint rather than um doing like pixel by pixel stuff and then the pixel by pixel stuff comes in later when You'll see that later as well here on the stream when we're going to clean up this sprite and make it look not like blobs. Um, that's when we'll, um, when we'll do more like single pixel stuff. Uh, ben is asking, what's your goal at this stage? Like, how do you know, hey, this is a good direction? Honestly, I don't know. Um, <laughs> right now, what I'm trying to do is, is is getting the basic character proportions and stuff right. Um, and then you'll see me flipping the canvas a lot like this, and that is so that I get um, a different view on something. Because if I if I keep staring at it, um, then what happens is I get used to how it looks, and then it doesn't look off to me. And so I try to flip my canvas a lot, especially in the early stages. Um, to get all the shapes and stuff right before we start rendering um, the the actual sprite. When I say rendering, I mean um, going over it and like tweaking all the pixels by hand to make it look the best it possibly can. Uh, it's not it's not like a, a 3D render where you let it let it sit and render the image. Uh, uh, have I tried any other pixel art programs like a spread or pixel edit? Yes, I, I, I tried both of those. Um, pixel edit was not really my thing. A sprite has some really cool features. Uh, and I think if you're, if you're not used to any other software, I highly recommend starting out with a sprite because there's just so much in there for me. Um, because I've been using graphic scale. Uh, which is what we're working in right now, uh, for like 10 years almost, uh, longer even, because I used it in college. So this is like probably 13 years, 13 or 14 years that I've been using this software almost daily. Um, I'm just so used to it and I know like all the ins and outs and stuff. So for me, this works very well. Um, I also could not get used to the interface in um, Xprint. 
So you know, because we flip this, like the legs here look a bit off. She looks a bit like unbalanced. So I wouldn't have noticed that if I had just kept kept going um, without flipping it. I'm sorry there's no like music or anything like people who know me from like nuclear throne streams we would always do we would just have music playing but can't really do that unless the stream will get muted or the archive will get muted yeah i i really like graphic scale you can do a lot of cool stuff um actually like like Around the end of the stream, I can like show off a couple features that I like if if there's time. Uh, features that have made my life a lot easier. Yeah, like Four Bear Friday. Uh, he knows. Uh, Four Bear Friday is um, one of the other artists on uh, Cadence of Hyrule. In fact, I asked all all the other artists, uh, uh, Ted Martin, Terry Plummer, and Medio to be here in the chat should there be questions about like that kind of stuff about like cadence art stuff so maybe they're here at least Tyreek's here at least <laughs> the calming atmosphere of it being completely silent except my voice let's put a face on cadence here so that we Um, we kind of have an idea of like how big her head is. Normally I would also open like reference images and stuff, but since I've drawn at least this version of Cadence uh, for quite a while, I can kind of do it off the dome. Which... Well, you know, when you draw your characters, or not, well, Cadence is my character, but when you draw characters um, every day, then you kind of get used to how they look and you kind of easily draw them. See, we're slowly, we're getting somewhere. I'll make this preview image bigger here. One of the things that I um, try to do when I do pixel art is I keep a preview image of the actual resolution that the art will be at um, or like like zoomed in twice or something like that because when you're zoomed in like this close sometimes you just don't see um, certain things like for example when we start shading um, like this might look fine because we're zoomed in and we can see like the contrast here, but if we zoom out, it might be too light. And so we have to like look at the uh, uh, contrast and change it uh, to make it more readable. Uh, so Marlin says, I guess when you figure out a character's basic shape, you wouldn't have to do so much of this blob work for other frames of animation. Is there a lot of copying when you animate? Actually, um, so the, the things I copy, I will copy the most are um, faces. Um, so because generally you can like keep them pretty similar. Um, but the, I, I, I animate almost like everything with blobs and then render it uh, uh, and, and clean it up rather than like copy pasting. Because I feel like with copy pasting, uh, your uh, your animations together, it, it ends up looking very flat. Like people will not treat um, their sprite as uh, as an actual um, a, a, a physical object, um, and I think that ruins the animation. Like it'll it, you can clearly see when something is being dragged around because the the arm like starts changing shape or it it like it it just doesn't feel like it's actually rotating in three D space. And so that's um, uh, 
uh, why it's important to, to just redraw your frames if you if you can. Well, hi, hi, Jazz, hi, Sarah. Everyone's showing up. Wow. All right, I'm tired of looking at bald Cadence here. We, should, we need to give her some hair. I'll do the um, the actual like Crypt of the Necrodancer hair rather than the Cadence of Hyrule hair, which I accidentally made too long. I I initially made just Cadence's sprite, and I based it on the sprites in Necrodancer. And uh, uh, turns out that her hair looks a bit longer in that because of the proportions of the body. So I didn't know that it was shoulder length. And so I made I gave her very long hair in in Cadence Five. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> hmm. See now we're starting to like move, move some stuff around, because I'm not really feeling some of these proportions. Um, but that's fine. Like we're still in the initial phase here. We're not rendering anything yet. I like this though. I like the the really big like knot on the on the back of the bandana. That's that's good. <laughs> oh, she used conditioner between games? Yeah. So let's work on the, the other side here. Put in the other arm. Have it lean on her shovel. Also, this I just put this pink line here um, so that I know where she is going to be standing. Sorry. That's fine. Um, the QA department at Brace Yourselves making noise here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because then, like, the, if you if you just use a, a color that you're not going to use for anything. Um, then, then it's easier to like m delete it from your image after. I tend to like keep this sort of this color reserved for things like that. So, for example, if I'm making an animation where a character is pushing against a wall, I would put like a wall here like that, and then um, draw the entire animation over it, and then I can easily delete that color. Q may cause in a ruckus. <laughs> uh, ben asks, have you ever done an animation that's like a bunch of pieces that are stitched together with a skeleton in 2D? So I, I did some of that stuff in college um, because we had to learn uh, Flash. Um, it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm not like a huge fan of it, but there are some companies like uh, Vanillaware that are like really good at that kind of stuff. Vanillaware is the creator of um, Odin Sphere and Muramasa and uh, Dragon's Crown. And I think that they, they found a way to make that kind of stuff look really nice. Um, because what they do is they don't just move a skeleton around. They also... Um, they also like if if say they make a run animation or something or or a sword slash they if if needed they'll redraw that asset that they're using for the sword for example in a different angle so that it doesn't look like it's just 2d um it, it, they really try to still treat their characters as um as if they are in a 3d space which is 
why they are it's so effective what they do um boo. um this is not for a game we're just drawing some random stuff yeah oh yeah definitely ah oh, Tariq I forgot that that was like that you can't do that now because of GDC Let's get some more, some more flat colors in here. And then pretty soon we can start like rendering out this sprite. Uh, actually we should save it so that we don't lose it in case Gale crashes, which it doesn't do often. Like the only times I've had Gale crash is um, when I was doing like really big stuff, but yeah, always safe for sure. Um, so I think we can either do this sprite like in a similar style to like the cadence of Hyrule and Necrodancer stuff, where it has an outline. Or we can try to do something without an outline uh, and just try to use like colors and shading to create the shapes. I don't know what people are more interested in seeing. I, like, I'm fine doing either. Uh, it's been a while since I've done the latter, but I could probably still do it. <laughs> Uh, uh, is there a number of colors you try to stay limited to how many is too many? So, um, with pixel art, I, I try to stay within 16 colors for, a, um, a sprite and that includes like the shading and that kind of stuff. So, um, for example, if we start shading this, like the tunic, I'll try to do like one shade like this and then maybe I'll add like one more red. that's like a bit darker to really get like the dark spots and then like a highlight if I need it. Um, to like highlight some of these areas or like do like folds like this. Um, but like 16 colors is like a pretty pretty good thing to aim for because then like when you have to do uh, when you have to recolor your sprites or you have to um, start animating them, you um, you save a bunch of time. Like you're you're not um, I don't know you did you're not constantly uh, trying to keep track of like all your colors or like. Oh, suddenly I, I forgot to use some colors in like the arm while animating it because there were 10 colors on just the arm, right? So trying to keep it simple is, uh, is best. Yes, I, yeah, Tariq, so I do get those error messages sometimes too. It just, I have no idea why that happens. Um, it's very strange. <laughs> it just randomly happens sometimes. I'll move too quickly and it's like, oh no, don't do that. Uh, no outline? Okay, okay. All right. Let's do no outline. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some colors from like an old like personal thing that I made. Let me grab that just so that I have like a bunch of colors to work with. It's mostly for um, the skin. Where is it? Here we go. Ah, don't open it in that. Open it in here. Boop. So now we got some colors to pick from here. 
on this old sprite that I made. Uh, do I always take the same color palette or do you make your own every time and how do you pick each color? So I I, I try to mix it up like there's I, since I've made so many sprites um, I will try to use like look at colors that I already have. This is a bit too light of a shading. There we go. Um, but if there if there's nothing in like my collection of like old stuff that I've made, then I will I'll try to like come up with some new palettes. Uh, sometimes I even like I'll I'll pick something from like other games, um, because. I don't know, like it, it's a, sometimes like other games just had a good idea for the colors and it's fine to use that kind of stuff. Oh, let's see if we can... I'm trying to think if it's... Okay, wait, okay, what we're gonna do is... I'm just gonna set this file up here real quick. Instead of like messing around with the first frame there we're gonna like redraw it on here using onion skinning just so that I don't have to like think about these like lines and stuff that I put down oh uh, yeah this is world dance with you I made this when the remake came out So this is a little bit of a weird process that we did because normally I wouldn't draw that and then go to like uh, outline list stuff. But um, since you all asked, we're just, we're gonna do that. And now it almost becomes more like painting. Picking a couple colors off of this here and there. It's pretty sloppy still, but we'll, we'll as we go, it'll. Um, it'll start to um, look nicer and be more refined. Wow, there's actually a lot of colors on on Neku here that I can use for Cadence. That's lucky. Just trying to find like where to put the mouth and stuff. Because her head is like kind of tilted. I guess we can do the same as here. So I'm not making pixel art for a video game right now. Uh, this is just um, just something that we're messing with. But um, in in my day to day, yes, I make I make pixel art for uh, video games. Hmm. 
Got, I don't know why I'm even... Why do I have headphones on? I realize now. Like, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not like, listening to anything. It's completely silent. I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to take these off. Because I can actually hear myself talk better. It's, it is the streamer look. Yeah, I need to have, like, a... Um, like a race car chair or something and some red bull in the back. I don't know. Look, sometimes you just, you just don't think while you're working. Half the time at the office, I'll have my headphones on. I'm not listening to anything. And then like the halfway through the day, I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. That's better, I think. This is some of the hardest stuff is like doing hands. I, yeah. It, it can be a fun puzzle, but it can also be, like, extremely frustrating. So you got to figure out a way to, like, show uh, the fingers at such a small resolution. Let's not fold it like that. Let's, let's place it on her hip like that. <laughs> hey, John. All the Johns are in here. Yeah, yeah. I love animating them. Like I did, I did some stuff animating hands um, for Octavo in in uh, Cadence of Hyrule, and that yeah, that was a lot of fun. somewhere yes you should attend Tyreek's crash course everyone should get on that also if there's any like specific things that um, that people need help with with pixel art like feel free to ask me Okay, we're doing okay. Got most of this done in like half an hour. That's not bad. So what we can do here, um, because the, the colors are in a different context, they're like next to the uh, pants rather than like the skin, we can reuse this color as like part of the boots. Um, it's... I wouldn't always do this. Sometimes it works. Um, one one thing it can be really frustrating with is when you want to do some palette swaps of your characters. So say I would want to make a cadence with a different outfit here and I want the boots to be black. Um, then I can't just, like if, if we're doing that in the easiest way possible, which is just changing um directly changing the colors on the the indexed palette 
uh, I'll show you what happens. So if we index the palette here, and we're like, oh, I want to make the, the the boots black. Oh, let's make them black. Oops. Now all the pixels that use that color in her, uh, her skin uh, also change color. And so if you're if you're planning ahead and you're like, oh, like I'm making my game and I want like um, actually you saying uh, are you saying like Mario three style? Mario is a good example. Like if if you're thinking, oh, I want Mario to be able to do like fire flower stuff, and I want to like easily change all the colors in a sprite from like the, the the blue overalls with to the white overalls with the red um uh red uh sleeves um planning ahead and and making all of that different colors and different color ramps will like really help because then then all you need to do is like shift some colors and then it up it can update that in all the animations For now, though, we can we can use um, these colors here for her boots. part in here again. I like making the handle blue like this, like it is in, uh, in Kings of Hyrule. Okay, we have our basic shapes again. Now let's start rendering some more. I'm going to turn off this grid because it's bothering me. Then we can turn off our guides there. Oh, okay. Suddenly, my Cintiq stopped working. What? Why is it doing that? Yeah, it's straight up like, the pen isn't working anymore. Well, that's great. Oh, here we go. Okay. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, these are, they, they don't actually use power. Uh, you don't have to charge them or put batteries in them. I have no idea how it works. It's magic to me. It's probably like magnets or something. <laughs> um, Nico, you hacked yours and put batteries in them. Yeah, yeah, it's always like the eyes and stuff that will look wonky if you don't flip the, the canvas. Eyes and just like just proportions in general. All right, this the f face is definitely bothering me a bit. Um, so we can do something better.
that's already better. See, that's that's another thing is like don't be too scared to just like erase stuff and redraw it. Because you already know what it looked like before. Like you can easily draw that again. So why not just try and try and do that? It'll always come out better. Uh, so this is a this is an old um, Cintiq 13 HD. This one's from like 2013, I think. It still works fine. No, that's really. I thought I would be able to reuse the the skin tone there for the hair, but it didn't really work. Okay, so now we're really gonna start getting some uh, rendering in on everything using our shading and stuff to create more forms. The first game I drew Pixar for, other than like old old school projects. Um, ooh, let me think. I think it was um, there, it was a DSiWare game called Flipper, which was about this little guy who lost his goldfish called Flipper, and he had to get it back. It was like a three D like puzzle game. Like I had like voxel levels, and I did all the characters for that. Um, and then I also, like, one of the first jobs I did was, um, Batman, uh, Brave and the Bold for, uh, Nintendo DS, which was a, um, 2D action Batman game. Um, and I guess, the, like, the first, like, Thing that people because the people knew these games but i think when i started doing like super great box and stuff it, with flambeer um that's when i like really um my games started getting more well known <laughs> So the way I'm shading Cadence here is almost more reminiscent of, of um, the stuff I did for Sonic Mania. That, that, doing that project really um, taught me how to do like pixel art without outlines. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, I, I think how fast I am at pixel art is one of my strengths. Like I'll, I generally like make a couple animations a day. When, once I have like the base sprite ready, then I can do a whole bunch of stuff just in one day.
you can see at the top here i didn't even realize that i had that on but the um it's cycling between the frames so like when you're drawing you actually see like a live update of your animation on the on the top here i also uh do high res uh stuff um so if you for example I post some I post illustrations in like my Twitter and stuff, but also like the the you know the the cadence of Hyrule illustration that's like um it's the game icon, but it's also the uh, the one on the website with like all the characters, all the enemies and stuff. I made that. Um, Lodovic asks, how do you plan ahead so in a style with no character outline, you can have the characters and background not merging too much? Um, that's a good question, actually, because that, yeah, it tends to happen. I think, um, well, one thing that'll help is just not using any colors that you've used for your characters in your background. So even, say, if, if, um say Cadence was wearing a green tunic instead, uh, I would not use that same green uh, for grass, for example. I would try to use a different green for that and maybe even try to make the characters more saturated than um, than the, the background is, like using more vibrant colors for your characters. That'll make them pop out. Also, um, just like sh shading and making sure that your... Um, all your volumes uh, read well and all your your characters just like they feel like they have some volume to them some depth um that'll help already with them not blending into the background see now that we're now that we're at in this phase uh, you can see me putting down more like individual pixels rather than just drawing big blobs. No time, okay. Doing all right. We can we can go for like a while. So I think I'm just gonna finish this one on stream. Like we don't have to stop at two. <laughs> Yeah, high-res pixel art can be difficult. Um, I've I've also done plenty of like really high-res stuff, not animated, but if you look at like the the boss intros in Cadence of Hyrule, for example, like those are very big and require a lot of um, um, like anti-aliasing and stuff, so those take quite a while. Something like this that we're making right now, I would still consider like a fairly low resolution thing. Yes, yeah, So in Jedi is really good. One of my favorite pixel artists. And he's in the chat, wow. <laughs> okay. A lot of rendering on the hair here. Let's start moving down a little bit. This is actually turning out like a lot better than I was expecting. Sometimes you have like I know it happens when you make art every day. Some days just aren't as productive or as good as other days, but this is going like very well. 
it's happened to me before like i did um back when game city was still a thing in uh, nottingham which was like a it's just like an indie games uh, festival i did some live pixel art uh, every day the whole week uh, life on a square on like a really big screen and so like people look in Nottingham could just like see that when they were out there and it was super fun to do but there were definitely like days where I just I, I couldn't do it like that doesn't have anything to do with like stage fright or something like that but it was just um, uh, <laughs> it was just a less productive day I suppose it just happens All right, let's actually count the colors on this thing. So this Gale has an option for that, count colors. So without the, these two, we're at 17. So I'm, a, I'm already like over the limit that I said I would do. So shame on me, I guess. But I'm not gonna change that. It actually looks quite nice, so we can just keep going. Hmm. Uh, the, uh, currently, there are not any other Pixar streams planned, but maybe in the future. Uh, Lodovic asks, thoughts on the future of pixel art when it comes to 3D stuff? Do you think we'll see a lot of pixel art textured games? Or is it too much trouble getting UVs right? No, I think you're already seeing that sort of stuff and and if you look at triple a um like you saw exactly that kind of stuff like what is it like 30 years ago 20 yeah 30 years ago like in the 90s if you look at um like like stuff that was done on sega saturn or on playstation um even on playstation 2 like a lot of texture work uh, is done by pixel artists. If you look at, um, especially games from from like Square Enix. So if you look at um, Vagrant Story on PS One, but also Final Fantasy Twelve on on PS Two, like that the, that's just all pixel art. Like there's so much pixel art tech in those textures. It's amazing. So I think I think indie games are uh, they'll catch up to that kind of stuff at some point. Like right now, uh, within like indie game pixel art, you can see people picking up more things like uh, GBA or Sega Saturn or PS1 type of pixel art. Um, so we're a little bit behind still, um, but we'll get there eventually. I don't really like what's going on here. This is a, 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 a thing that can be hard about doing no outline is sometimes your shapes get, they get a bit strange because you try to cram a lot of detail in and then it's better to just simplify it and um, make your clusters of, of pixels a bit bigger so that they read better. Like this bandana now uh, looks better than what it did a couple seconds ago, just because I removed like a whole bunch of pixels. Oh, hey, Justin. This is this is just like what twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Old school. Everyone's here. <laughs> Tell for the people that don't know what I'm talking about right now. I used to do um when we made Nuclear Throne, we live streamed development twice a week. So I've done a lot of these kind of live streams and Looks like a, a whole bunch of people who used to watch back then are, are here right now. Or even who worked on the game, like Justin worked on Nuclear Throne.
Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah. Uh, to have it, that's totally fine to ask. I I, I believe that uh, for Bit Friday streams pixel art and game development quite a bit. Get a little bit money here. So now that we've rendered a bit of this, I can tell that she's a little bit leaning forward. So tilt her back a bit like that. It's better. Thanks, Marlon. Have a good meeting. Trying to see if we can do something else with the leg here. Give her a bit more of a lean. No, not really. Okay. Peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe the stream is not going to be uh, quite as long as the nuclear throne streams were so I don't know if we have time to do an animation or something like that but mostly trying to get this sprite done and then we'll see we could always save that for like a future stream or something I'd love to do other characters. It's just probably don't have time for it today.
Thank you. I'm glad everyone's enjoying this so much. Been a while for me, but it's definitely fun to do. All right, we gotta gotta work on our on our boot here. See if we can get a nice shape out of that. Nice chunky boots. My legs kind of it's kind of bugging me. Something's off about it. I think give her more of a almost a power stance. What other franchise I'd like to work on? <laughs> Please say Klonoa, that's funny. Klonoa would be cool actually. Um, I really like the um, the pixel-based Klonoa games, like the GBA ones and the and the one on Wonderswan. Um, so that would actually be super cool. Uh, obviously, like Kirby is like a big a big one for me. That I don't know if I necessarily because like they they make they already make the kind of Kirby games that I love, but doing like some pixel art on a Kirby game would be cool. Mega Man is another one that uh, would be awesome. This kind of works. Make the skirt a little bit. Yeah. Okay. See, now we're getting somewhere. Thank you. Yeah, it will be super. I've been playing a lot of the Zero Collection, and so doing a game like that, that would be amazing. Oh man, Rystar? Dude, Tyreek, do you want to make a Rystar game together? <laughs> I mean, it is Sonic Team, so...
All right, we're getting there. <laughs> Rai Star Mania. Does anyone have any other questions or anything? I'm I'm just sitting here drawing, but I can answer questions. Can be anything, doesn't have to be pixel art, can also be about like character design or Favorite animal to draw? Hedgehogs, obviously. <laughs> uh, ben asks, have you dealt with uh, <laughs> setting up hitboxes and stuff for animations, like drawing a hitbox info, separate frame data? No, I haven't actually, but that'll be interesting. Like I'm, I definitely want to like do like um, a beat em up or like a fighting game someday. So I would want to be part of that process. I do try to like keep, keep a character's hitbox in mind. So like when doing, right now we're just freehanding a sprite, like this is not for a game, right? But if, if, if we decide like, oh, a character is like, has to occupy like a 32 by 32 space even if i go outside of that i try to have the elements that go outside of that box be um non like obstructive looking or non-threatening so that the player doesn't feel like oh i can't move there or 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 um it doesn't communicate like they're attacking something when they're actually not hitting it at all you know uh, would you like to once make assets animations for a high-res game like Skullgirls or Indivisible? Ooh, that would be fun, but it's I'm not at that level yet. I think like doing high-res stuff is a whole whole other thing that I have not a lot of experience in. I've done some of it while I was making uh, a, a music game of my own, but that's a long time ago. Like almost five years ago now probably I'd like to at some point I, I it, it probably would be more something like um, like a Muramasa where where it's like semi skeletal with with some hand animation here and there like I'm I think something like that is more feasible <laughs>
How's my day been? It's been all right. Just doing the stream and working. Played some Animal Crossing in the morning. Gloves. Oh, yeah, she has gloves. Of course. Thank you. Draw this character every day and still... My island. My island is called Float Isle. I wanted to do Angel Island, but it didn't fit. That's how I input. I input Angel because I thought it would add the island suffix, and it didn't. And then I, I reset the game. And Flo Float Islands is something from Kirby. That's a location in Kirby. No, no island theme at all. I'm I just gonna roll with the punches. I'm not the kind of person who like puts paths and that kind of stuff and decorates a lot in Animal Crossing. I just let things happen. I have pe no, yeah. Yeah, I have peaches. Mm -hmm. And apples now as well. Uh, yes, uh, Tlavik, I'll, I will ask um, uh, Leanne to post this after the stream. Look at this, like, look where we started. Did this in about an hour. Not bad. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't go with your first draft. Throw it out. No one knows. These hands came out pretty decent.
That's nice. nice. <laughs> I think my Gale is only set up for like 50 steps, unfortunately. But there will be, um, like, all of this is recorded, so there will at least be, like, a YouTube recap of this. I don't think it has undo gifts. But that, that would be an awesome feature. Let's put her on a different background so we can see the shovel a little bit better. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know if you can actually, like, in preferences, change that. Probably not. No, it doesn't look like it. I'm not, like, I, it's so in my muscle memory now that I'm not too bothered by it, but yeah, it would be nice if that wasn't a thing that it did. Thanks. <laughs> Let's move um, our shovel over a little bit. It's a little bit too close to the to the boot there, especially since it shares colors. The dirt does. Oh, thank you for subscribing. 
and rating. 21 months, Elant, wow. It's almost two years. That's crazy, thank you. Oh yeah, Wario Land, like, I, um, I did an interview a while ago and I was asked like what other stuff I would like to work on and um, a Wario Land RPG is one of the things I said. Which, that, it would be a lot of fun. I have ideas for it. It'd be like heist-based Wario's like trying to steal stuff. No, he's not allowed. John, he's not allowed in the game. I refuse. That's that's really cool. Uh Chris Santi, is that how you say your username? I think you were talking about that in the Discord a while ago, if I'm not mistaken. Where was it Octavo as well? This is the other one where you have that, where the colors match up with the name. That's super cool. the time. Woo! 2.30 almost. Well, we're almost done. Anyone's got any more questions before we start wrapping this up? I don't think we'll have uh, time to do any other characters, but um, hopefully we can do this again and then I'll, I'll do some other Necrodancer characters. Now we've gotten to the to the point where I kind of start like nitpicking things. This is the part where I would like post the sprite on Twitter and then realize that there's things uh, that I want to change and so I post a different version on like Tumblr or something. Favorite pixel art food like in like like drawing? I don't know. I don't know what's a fun food to draw. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, my, my personal Twitter, I'll post it in here. This is my personal Twitter. So you can follow me there. Um, I don't post like a ton of artwork because I, I draw like eight hours a day and I don't feel like drawing much more after. 
but uh, sometimes I do. See, now I'm just I'm staring at it, seeing if I can add anything. I kind of want to do this different. <laughs> Thanks. My parents were watching. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's that that's basically the first thing that was taught to me um, when I went to art school was kill your darlings Which I think it's a good thing to to know It's so easy to like you see the same when, when people will start to animate their pixel art and it's like oh, I don't I don't really like they'll make an idle animation that's basically just this because they don't want to redraw like a sprite um but it it really hurts your your work if you're if you're scared to um redraw something or completely change it So nitpicky now with this thing. <laughs> There's I don't like this what's happening here. There's this line that um, because it's tangential to to this one here, it just creates like a really long line as if there's like a square here. So I'm trying to eliminate that before we 
call this thing done. That's a little bit better because then now there's like sort of a wave where there's like a pixel missing here and there's some missing here. <laughs> yeah, the pose, like, it's a little bit awkward. It, it's the way she's not really leaning as much. Like, what if we drag this forward instead? That's actually better. Now she's leaning more on the shovel. Even then, there's like still some stuff that I would probably change here. But this is definitely the part where I can you can spend like another two hours just like moving stuff around until it's perfect. Um, and then you have to animate it, and then it doesn't matter anymore because <laughs> then you're moving stuff around anyway. This is also not usually what I would do for like a game sprite. Like if it, if it was a game sprite, it would be a more um, neutral pose. And then we would work uh, all the animations from there. Let's see if we can make this like a little bit better. The hardest part here right now is not losing all the definition in the legs when we try to move them like this. Probably use some black here. No, I'm not going to animate it on stream. We're already kind of over time, <laughs> just because I want to finish it up. Um, so animation won't happen this time. Maybe next time I do this, instead of doing like a big character like this, we can we can do like a smaller character and then show some uh, animation techniques. Yeah, the leg is better when it's when it's more back. Another way to fix it would be if we pulled this one forward and then the other one back way more. But honestly, like pretty close to done for something that's just like a little stream thing 
It's pretty good. I think that's a little bit better. Uh, it could be it could be used uh, in game. I think it's not too many colors. This is very similar to um, to what we did with Sonic Mania. It's like it's obviously a little bit harder to animate because there's uh, a whole bunch going on, but it's it's not impossible. All right. When drawing sprites like this, do you also imagine a situation the character's in at the moment, like what she's looking at or something? Mm. No, this one was more just a kind of generic pose. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll do something like that. I'll make like a sprite that, um, that has a very specific ex expression or something like that, but not, not always. This was more just a generic thing. Alright, I think I'm gonna call it done there. It's not, it changed a little bit from where I wanted it to go, but overall, we compared the two here. I think we did pretty good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching um, For asking so many questions to keep me talking while I work That's a lot of fun. Um, I'll try to um, To do this again sometime uh, Next time we can we can try doing like uh, Animating a character or something like that make something like make a sprite from scratch do it smaller and then animate it um on the same stream i think we can definitely do that um as long as we don't go overboard with the sprite like we did with this one <laughs> i was intending to do like a small like idle animation or something but uh we kind of went overboard with with all the rendering and stuff and i'm still picking at it as i talk see <laughs> uh anyway uh i think that's it i don't i think next week marlin might be streaming i think it's it it'll definitely be like another um like byg at home thing um so tune in next week we'll we'll see what happens then anyway have a good weekend everyone thanks for watching bye